A lot of you loved Firefox, as did I, and I still do love a lot of things about it. But I no longer use Firefox on any of my devices and have moved to alternatives. This video will break down what I like and dislike about Firefox and why I moved to these alternatives after a quick message from our sponsor. Protecting your online presence is a necessity. While we teach a lot of best practices, adding CrowdSec is like hiring a personal bodyguard. Their open source security engine uses community intelligence to detect and block cyber threats with an infinite number of uses, like protecting your NAS from brute force attacks, securing your Plex server, Nextcloud, the websites that you're hosting, IoT devices in your home, and so much more. With CrowdSec, you can detect advanced threats with their engine that identifies sophisticated attacks that traditional security solutions might miss. You can protect against common threats as CrowdSec can even prevent the attack in the first place. And if you wanna tinker around with CrowdSec and customize it to your liking, that's cool too, because they allow you to do that by customizing your security to your specific needs. So whether you're trying to keep the Olympics safe or you're just trying to keep your personal data safe at home, you can experience the peace of mind that you want with CrowdSec. Visit the link on the screen to learn more and we'll also have links down in the description so you all can protect your digital future. First, I love how it's open source. Makes it feel like I'm part of a greater community movement, there's more transparency, and you can just guarantee things are a little bit safer when it's open source. I also enjoy how when you use Firefox, you're not directly contributing to Google's monopoly. Now, this can mean different things. At the end of the day, Mozilla exists mostly because of Google and their search deal, and Google still is the default search engine in Firefox. But it's not direct, and that goes a long way. You're also not using the Chromium browser engine, which is another way that you are kind of de-Googling when you use Firefox. I also think Firefox does a really good job with customization and extensions. With customization, you could pretty much change Firefox and make it as private and secure as you want it to be, and that's why this whole Firefox hardening world exists. And also, extensions are very robust, even offering some extension support on mobile, which is pretty rare and hard to find on the Chromium side of things. So those are the positives of Firefox that I'm going to try to keep in the browsers I'm about to share with you, but before we get there, why would I even not use Firefox? And that's where we touch on a little bit of the drawbacks. So first, I'm not a fan of how bloated Firefox is. And what I mean by that is it comes with a lot of stuff out of the box that I have to customize. And if you're somebody who cares a little bit more about privacy and security, you actually have to go into your Firefox settings and modify quite a few things to probably get it to your liking. You can leave it on by default, and it's not the worst thing in the world, but it's still not something that I think most people agree Firefox is good about. I don't think it's like clean and minimal out of the box. On that note, uh, there is a lot of room for improvement, I think, in the privacy and security side of things. Firefox does fall a little bit behind with Chromium security, but especially on the privacy front, uh, Mozilla does opt you into a little bit of data collection, which they're being sued for as we speak. And when it comes to protection against third parties, uh, Firefox can just do a little bit better. I don't think it's bad, and if you use Firefox, you're not in a bad place. And you can see this on websites like privacytests.org, which means you have to put work into making Firefox better, and that's why we personally have made guides on Firefox hardening and what that looks like. Last bit on usability, some sites just don't work as well on Firefox. I know you're gonna hear mixed things about this, but I feel like it's hard to debate. Firefox just has different compatibility than other web engines, and on top of that, it's just kind of the downside when you're using a browser that doesn't have a huge amount of market share. Developers are not prioritizing Firefox. Now, I don't know who to blame for this problem, but it's still a problem. Now, the third thing, and this is probably the biggest thing for me, is progressive web apps. Firefox killed progressive web apps, despite every other browser using web apps now and it being kind of a standard feature. Now for me, this is kind of a deal breaker because I use things like Mastodon with a progressive web app, our forum for TechLore, which is where you can get access to all of our resources, is through a progressive web app and that's how I engage with it every day. I use Crypty to journal every day and I have a lot of other web apps that I use and I'm very dependent on these web apps and Firefox just doesn't support that. You can still access the web apps through your Firefox browser, but it just doesn't integrate with your operating system the same way. So those are my pros and cons of Firefox. And I wanted to find a browser workflow that kind of gets the pros of Firefox, but not as many cons. And I'm gonna start with my default browser. 
which is on the screens behind me, and it's Molvad Browser. Molvad is actually Firefox based, and it's somewhat of a loose fork of Tor Browser. They might get mad at me for calling it that, but it is an official collaboration with the Tor project, and it takes a lot of the hardening done in the Tor Browser, but it does it without routing through the Tor network and instead encouraging its users to go through a VPN, ideally Molvad VPN, which is the other partner in this project. I like Molvad Browser because it's ephemeral, so it wipes data on exit, kind of like Tor Browser. It's like you have normal browsers, like just default Firefox, you have Tor Browser, and then Molvad Browser is kind of like here. Now the cool thing with Molvad Browser is it takes the pros from Firefox, which is it's open source, it's actually even less dependent on Google than Firefox is, and it still has uh, the possibility to install extra extensions, though I might not do that because the whole point of Molvad is you're supposed to blend in with everybody else, kind of like the Tor browser, so probably best not to adjust anything in Molvad. And it's a bit of a different use case in Firefox, which I'll talk about soon. And in terms of the cons of Firefox I listed out earlier, I think it's a lot less bloated because you don't have to change anything by default and it's super clean just the moment you open it. And part of the reason you don't have to touch anything is because they've already adjusted all the privacy and security settings to be pretty much as good as you want them to be for general usability out of the box. It's a great default browser for me because what that means is I click a link in Signal, I click a link in my RSS feed, I click random links in any other app, and it's going to open in this ephemeral browser that's meant to just wipe data. It's a non-personal browser. But what Mulvad is missing is more of a non-ephemeral environment where I can stay logged into the few accounts I need to be logged into. And that's where using a second browser is going to really help me. And that second browser is Brave. I feel like Brave is controversial and that's really valid. I am not a huge fan of their cryptocurrency stuff. I also don't like how bloated it is by default. I think it's a lot more bloated than Firefox is. But there are some things Brave has that I just can't give up. Brave offers progressive web apps, like everybody else. Compatibility is also fantastic, and the usability, uh, it's up to standard with what Chrome has, meaning pretty much every Google service overall should work decently on Brave. In my chart too of like Tor, Molvad, and Firefox, I'd say Brave actually has a happy medium between default uh, Firefox and a default Molvad. Default Brave is kind of in the middle there for me. Now one downside to Brave is it does kind of feed a little bit into Google in the sense that it is based on Chromium, but uh, on the other hand, uh, they don't really have Google anywhere else. They don't have Google as a default search engine. As far as I know, there isn't like a huge a conflict of interest, and they actually actively avoid a lot of Google's kind of bad tech that they implement into Chrome, um, to the point where they're even still supporting UBO and other extensions via Manifest V2. And that's a whole feature they built just into Brave so that users don't have to go into this nonsense that Chrome is pushing onto them. So it's really hard to get mad at them for stuff like this. When you put together the pros and cons that I've kind of found between Molvad and Brave, I feel like it kind of answers the question why it makes more sense to use these two browsers than to just use Firefox. So what should you do? First, I think you should acknowledge there is no perfect browser. Every browser is going to have pros and cons that are going to be different depending on the person using the browsers. My pros and cons might not even be the things you're looking for and that's okay. I think all of you should start by making a pros and cons list of the things that you need in your day-to-day -day life, and then try out different browsers and see how they stack up in these different pros and cons, and try to find a combination of them where it's not too inconvenient. I think two to three browsers is probably the sweet spot, but see how many of them you can kind of tick off the pros that you enjoy with as few cons as possible. There's probably a really good workflow you haven't found yet if you're still using one browser, and there's probably room to grow. This video is actually inspired by Michael Horn's video of him switching to Firefox, and he brings up a lot of great points for why he likes Firefox, and you can't really knock him. It's just what works for him. So check out that video. It's what inspired this one. And also, I want to thank the sponsor of this video, CrowdSec, and I want to thank all of our patrons and tech Lorians. They all have a private signal group that they're chatting in right now as I speak, um, and they're just wonderful and make this kind of content possible. I just made a video uh, last week about the 10 daily privacy tools that I use in my day-to-day -day life, so if you want to see other stuff I use, check out that video. And I'll see you next time on TechLore.